Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, the caster they call Ghost, coming back to you with another 1v1 on sticks. Um, well, this is, I don't know, it doesn't actually have one specific name, but this is the uh, multi system plant where you have where both players spawn in on the lava planet, then they have the option to go for an orbital to the giant metal planet, which has tons and tons of metal. I mean, just looking at the metal resource ratio, I mean, we've got like a metric crap ton versus uh, not that much. So, spawning in on both sides, we have the yellow player, um, Mech Slayer 1. Goodness gracious, that's one heck of a name you got there, friend. And his opponent spawning in on the green side, or at least on the other side, he is green, he is Snake. Now, I was actually requested by Snake to watch his uh, match, and I can probably already figure out what's going on between both players. First thing I noticed, they both opened vehicles. Now, fun fact for you guys that, out there that might not know what to open up on this match, I specifically don't really know because I'm not much of a big orbital person. Uh, Styx tends to be kind of one of my least favorite maps. But, you know, it's in the map, map pool, so you gotta know what to do on the right spot. Now, the first thing that I noticed that um, both players opened up with that probably neither one should have really opened up with is vehicles. Now, you might be saying, you know, Ghost, what the heck? You know, it's it's, uh, it's a lower-ranked match. Well, I don't know how lower-ranked this is. I don't really know what ranked either of these players are. I do know, though, that both players are opening up with vehicles, and I do that know that also know that there really isn't that much metal on this planet. I mean, if we just look around, there's only, what, uh, three, six, seven, eight, nine... 10-ish metal spots, and while that is really good, that'll give them a really good economy, you know, when you're trying to go for much more illustrious, more, uh, kind of bigger tier 2-ish level things, that can't really be the big, the best decision. Now, as we can see, uh, looks like Snake is going for, whoa, okay, that's a really long walk time for his commander. Um, I guess that's going to be the first thing I'll critique, uh, I'll critique, at least on Snake's side. If we look over at Yellow, um, he's going vehicles as well, but I think he's actually got this kind of laid out. His commander only building a lot closer to his base, actually a lot more inside his base as well. He does have one fabricator going around, but it doesn't look like he's really expanding that hard. He's definitely doing it a lot more slower and a lot more methodically. Now, it looks like uh, Yellow will be using his uh, first vehicle, or his second vehicle, vehicle factory, sorry, to build a uh, scout thingy majig <laughs> and it looks like uh, Snake on the other hand is actually gonna finally get over to his well I guess his kind of vehicle production line but I mean if we just look at the travel time that was almost a good two minutes that they've both spent sort of walking around or at least Snake has spent trying to get over to his little production line now obviously he will be going vehicles um, but we don't see much micro on his side we see a lot of fabricators that are move that aren't really moving around same thing for yellow but at least yellow has some uh, economy. They're both surplusing at 100. Looking over at the armies tab, we do see a mobile count of almost identical size. Fabricator Snake is up on double, but really what are both players using them for? It looks like uh, Snake might be trying to go for uh, more of a factory or a vehicle factory, sorry, vehicle factory push with a lot more uh, tanks while it looks like I think, I think Mech Slayer is going to be going for the same thing. Both players trying to open up very heavy in the vehicles, which it can be very good, um, especially on a, a planet like Forge or Hephaestus whichever you want to really call it. Most people call it Forge, but um, you know, if something on someone on a map like Forge, that could be really good, especially if uh, you have that nice slow push, you know what you're doing, you're microing your tanks, your bots are going everywhere fabricating, but as we can see, both players really don't seem to know what they want to do. Um, they're both opening kind of steadily, Snake actually taking a bit of an efficiency dip here, just because he's got all these fabricators, which he actually has realized he does have, he's going to start moving them out, but I don't think he really has much. Um, we do see a couple tanks here for Snake, the first engagement of the match we might actually see, and I mean, it's going to be a wash. I mean, we see all these tanks here first for Mech Slayer, but just absolutely nothing here against uh, for Snake, and only it was like 4 versus like 10, and we don't see any form of vision, so there was no way that Snake could have even known that he was taking such a bad trade. I mean, we do have a radar, but since the radar has been uh, kind of squished down, really, I don't know if it's been released or not, but there really wasn't that much vision. I don't think he can see it. I think he can only see about halfway here, maybe where this turret's being put up. Now, uh, Snake does see all of the fabricate, or the, uh, units, excuse me, for Mech Slayer. Mech Slayer is just going to con continue to kind of start marching. Now, he will, if he continues this path, he will start walking into the commander, and that is not going to be a pretty little sight. He is starting to get a Pelter, which is kind of an in interesting little choice, especially since I guess he's expecting Snake to try and uh, push out the side. Now, as we can see here, we do, um, have a bit of a trade here. The commander kind of 
easily cleaning off a nice uber though very good shot for him he's slowly working his way into the uh, military of mech slayer and as you can see they're really he's kind of forgotten that these units are here the anti-air not gonna be able to obviously kill a commander but there really wasn't much else that he could have done except maybe pull back and you know not throw away those units and oh that was an unhappy little fighter there but uh, it looks like snake is continu uh, excuse me why are you building a teleporter Okay, so guys, um, tip number two, unless you're going orbital, you do not need a teleporter. This is a very small map, you do not actually need, uh, the travel time isn't that large, unlike if we look over at Hades, this is a very large map. Now, if you had maybe uh, your base here and you were trying to kill off an opponent over here, maybe putting a teleporter over here would be really nice. That is a very long travel time, and it would be impossible to try and get reinforcement units there all the time. So, in a map like this, um, this is very, or a planet, excuse me, like this, this is really small, and it's really not the best decision. Uh, I think this is a lot of wasted economy that he's trying to march. He's marching his commander. Don't know why it's there. Uh, he should be trying to expand, sending maybe these units in instead of his commander, because if he took a uh, better fight for himself now. Oh, this Pelter is in range, isn't it? Yep. So it looks like Snake's units are in range of this Pelter, and they're going to slowly start work. The Pelter will slowly start working on his tanks. I think this is going to put Snake into a position of whether he wants to go in or not. I really don't think he should, though, just because. I mean, if we look at this, uh, this um, on a far, you know, kind of, kind of in our little spectator spot. Yellow's getting orbital. Snake has no form of orbital, and if I know anything about uh, these kind of players, they're probably we're probably going to start seeing some anchor creeps, if anything. Um, I don't think we'll see any form of uh, multi-planet trade-off. I don't think either player really wants to try and do that. But as you can see here, I mean, this is just not a good trade here for Snake, and he really shouldn't be trying to fight into an army that he doesn't even know how big it is. Um, he does see the radar, so he does. He knew. He even knew that there were more units here. And if we look, I mean, he can see all these units. I guess he was expecting to try and use his commander to maybe get some sweet uber shots but there really isn't much else here now even the flame tanks are coming out to try and join the party they're gonna start burning everything that they can get their little hands on and this this forward little outpost that snake has here is going to fall there is absolutely no anti-air here and while the bombers were doing some oh hello there boom bots what are you doing just gonna chill there all right we'll keep we'll keep an eye on you we'll just keep a little eye on there for okay so it looks like uh, snake's commander is in a bit of a pickle here the bombers can i think they should be trying to go after this little teleporter instead of trying to go after the commander the commander does have fantastic anti-air now we can't beat overwhelming numbers but he can kill off the occasional three or four fighters that try and get in his way now snake is backpedaling his commander is taking some damage but if he fires his uber and kites this properly he really won't take that much damage as long as he's cautious but i really think that yellow should be trying to do instead of trying to basically tunnel vision for this commander go after his production forget the commander but really when you've got orbital who cares uh we're probably gonna i'm i'm almost dead certain at this point we're probably gonna see some um anchors depending on whether these things decide to teleport out of our vision or just kind of start floating over to snake's base that will probably be our biggest deciding factor we are gonna see some pelt or tele i think we see anchors i'm i called them pelters but honestly they are space pelters <laughs> either way so uh, Snake is continuing to try and push out. I don't think he's going to be really able to get, re really able to get that now. If we just kind of look at what Snake could have done, uh, what we could have done is I would have liked to have seen bots. Um, if we notice, the yellow player, yellow commander, really didn't have much uh, kind of production in the beginning. If he was a lot, if Snake was a lot more uh, agile with his bots, now he's trying to do something with these boom bots, and he does get a couple, but I don't think this is ever going to be enough to actually kill a commander. He doesn't even have vision of this, so he's going to see that the commander's here. He does get some damage on him, but it really wasn't enough. It was only two two boom bots, and the commander does know how to use his Uber, so that was a very, uh, very good cleanup by Yellow to take care of this. I mean, he is taking some damage, but it's just not enough. This Pelter, I don't know how it's on 8%, but dang, it is a real trooper. Uh, looks like Snake is continuing to try and rally his units to the broken teleporter. Don't know why more <laughs> more units of snakes trying to go help the already healthy commander but at this point does he actually know that there is okay so he does see the orbital or if he doesn't he's gonna see the lines that are saying there's stuff in space but i don't think he's gonna be able to really do anything at this point um his oh okay so we do see the orbital factory of snakes up he does have an avenger being produced but will it be up quick enough to stop these four fabricators from actually getting this this uh, anchor up if snake can kill this off quick enough there is an avenger now he's gonna have to be very careful with it but will it be enough? I mean, if, even if he kills off the anchor above, even on the ground army, there really is way too much here. That's for Snake to stop. His Right now, his units are out of position. He needs to be fighting up here, trying to take the good fight. Now, he is he is actually taking a really nice fight like this. All of his units are concaving to fight right in between this teleport and this mech extractor. And that was a very good fight for him. He fought 
very, very well. Now, we do... Okay, so, it looks like the um, orbital fabricators did try and get a little bit greedy here. They did try and go over the entirety of Snake's base, but... Oh, this is gonna be close. If this... Oh, no, it's gonna get done. Oh, no, no, no. Avenger, don't do it. You're gonna... Never mind. Okay, so, Avenger has been murdered, and, um... Well, I don't think Snake has a leg in this race anymore. It looks like he's effectively been anchor rushed, or, yeah, anchor creeped. Uh, it looks like this another... We're probably gonna see another anchor. Yep, there's another anchor. So, once that's taken care of, it's really just a matter of time. I think Snake's trying to get some more Avengers out, but really, he should be trying to get some Umbrellas. Avengers should not be your first priority, especially when you know you've already lost the Orbital game. We are going to see the anchor get placed down in a couple seconds. There it is. And it looks like at this point, Snake either needs to go for a Hail Mary, get his commander out of there, try and push through this other side, because this back door has been completely untouched by Snake and really by his op uh, his opponent, neither player really even thinking about, you know, this is a 3D planet and this is not just one linear box. So, could have easily gone around, tried to take, you know, a better fight, but, you know, things happen. Uh, sometimes anchors get above your base and you're just too panicked because right now we do see these Avengers still trying to fight the Avengers. And really, I mean, in, in effect, he could slowly work this down but when there's an anchor over your base your economy and your efficiency are going to start to drop and that's just not going to be pretty two more avengers are going to come over here to join the fight and i mean well he's going to kill this is going to be an even kill trade i think if the dancing is just right one loss and okay so that is that now there is one more excuse me why did you blow up Wait, 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 whoa, 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 did I see, did I miss a boombots, did I miss some boombots, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, what the hell, what the hell, it was boombots all along, what the hell, <laughs> I'm so sorry guys, I didn't even know, forgot about this back, this little panel, I thought that he was dead, okay, well I'm stupid, sorry about that, um, so it looks like Snake manages to pull it out of his bum, even at the very last minute. The Boombots do come through, and surprisingly, he does win a match he should have lost. So congratulations to Snake. Mech, like I said, protecting that back door. Snake did realize that this isn't a three, this isn't a 2D map, and did, and did manage to pull it out of his butt. So congratulations to Snake for remembering that uh, 3D is a thing. Uh, congratulations for remembering that bots are very good, especially on a map where it's really uh, a very very metal deficient planet now oh uh, there okay so there's the bots i was wondering where he was getting the boom bots there was there weren't any around here so congratulations to both players and of course guys i hope you guys have a good day a good day good afternoon good night and i'll see all of you guys later bye bye